Hi, everybody. This is Mike Werner, and I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to this quick, mostly raw footage video on the basic statement of cash flow classifications. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, I appreciate any questions or comments you might have, and I'll surely respond to each and every one of them. So let's take a look at the statement of cash flows classifications. A statement of cash flows is a real important uh, statement, obviously. Businesses, uh, if they go out of business, the reason they go out of business is because they run out of cash. They could run out of every other commodity, everything else, and stay in business. But once they're out of cash, they're done. So we've got a statement that focuses on cash. The statement is divided into three parts, three activities, the operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Now, before we get going on this and looking at operating activities, I want to talk about, you know, the possible classifications of a couple of things. If we have an investment, we make an investment in a stock or a bond. The reason we make the investment is so that we can earn, you know, interest or dividends. When we borrow, when we finance our business through borrowing, we're going to have to generally pay interest on that loan. And if we, if we finance our business by issuing stock, we may pay dividends. We may pay dividends, okay? So the question is, when we classify these amounts, where should the, the dividends go and where should the interest go and so forth? So if we take a look at it, if we have interest paid, interest paid, and then we have interest received, and, uh, and then maybe dividends paid and dividends received, we've got to ask ourselves, where should we, where should we place these on the statement? Now, uh, if we use common sense, use common sense, we might say interest paid has to do with amounts that we borrow, right? And since it's interest paid on an amount we borrowed to finance our operation, maybe it should go into financing activities. Now, on the other hand, interest paid, interest paid appears on the income statement and we, and we operating activities um, has to do with the earnings that the company has as it's depicted on basically on the income statement, adjusted for some buffer accounts and so forth. So uh, because of that, perhaps maybe we should classify it as operating activities. So both of these make sense. So that's interest paid. Now interest received, interest we receive, we receive it on investments. And since it has to do with the investments, you might say that the interest received should be part of investing activities. On the other hand, interest revenue, interest revenue is included on the income statement and is part of our income and part of our operation. So perhaps we should classify it as operating activity. And now let's talk about dividends paid. Dividends paid is paid, you know, on, on the stock that we sold to, to, to finance our operation. And, and therefore it makes sense that the dividends paid to our owners where we've received funding for financing the business, maybe it should be part of financing activities. And then you think about it, and dividends paid are on the income statement. Oh, wait, hold up. No, wait, Warner. They are not on the income statement. You overstepped there, right? Instead, they're on the statement of stockholders' equity. So, so the dividends paid are not part of, of the income statement, and therefore really probably shouldn't be part of operating activity. So, so I don't know. I'll leave that one out. And then dividends received. Dividends are received on investments that we make. So it makes sense, makes common sense. Maybe we should consider them part of investing activities. On the other hand, dividends received would show up on the income statement as dividend revenue, right? Dividend revenue. And, and, and therefore, it's part of our operation and what we're doing to, to you know, for earnings. And therefore, perhaps we should classify it as operating. So... Common sense will give us these choices, you know, and we say, well, which one, where should we put it? Or can we put it anywhere? Well, under U.S. GAAP, a little different than international GAAP, but under U.S. GAAP, I guess when the FASB was figuring out how to put this statement together, they probably debated, you know, where these things should go. And uh, what they went with was this second one. Interest paid, even though it has to do with financing oper you know, financing our business, is part of operating activities, perhaps because it's part of our income statement and in, in, in our earnings from, from the business. Interest received, instead of being part of investing activities, which, which would make sense because it's interest received on investments, it's part of operating activities. And then dividends paid, uh, well, it, it can't really be part of operating because it's not on the income statement. So the FASB went along and said, okay, we're going to treat this as a financing activity. So we've got you know, operating, operating, financing, and then the last one, dividends received, 
these are dividends received on our investment. And, and, and although the FASB could have gone either way on it, they, they went ahead and said, well, it's part of the income on our income statement, so let's go ahead and treat it as an operating activity. So if you try to use common sense to classify these items, you'll probably get this one correct, dividends paid. But the others, you have a high probability of making a mistake. So what you've got to do is remember that interest paid or, or received is part of operating activities, and dividends received is part of operating activities, and dividends paid is part of financing. <coughs> financing. So there we go. So now with that little intro, let's take a look at some of the, some of the uh, uh, cash flows from operating activities. So we're looking at operating activities. The cash inflows, inflows, as you might imagine, would be cash collections associated with sales revenue and service revenue and rental revenue and uh, bolded and underlined interest revenue or dividends revenue. Now, this is, it's not necessarily the amount of the revenue because we don't necessarily receive all of the cash in the, in the period of the transaction. But instead, we've got to sort of adjust it for how much cash we receive for the sale. So it's collections associated with the sales revenue, service revenue, and so forth. Uh, now, now, we should be uh, careful because, uh, yeah, if we use common sense and try to classify these things, these revenues, we might make the mistake, as I mentioned before, of misclassifying those two. Cash flows from uh, operating activities, the cash outflows. This would be cash payments, cash payments. So it's not the amount of the expense, but it's the amount paid for these things, like salaries expense. Not necessarily equal to salaries expense, because you might have some salaries payable, but it's, it, 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 and so the uh, amount paid for salaries doesn't equal the expense, but it's the cash payments associated with salaries expense, a rent expense, tax expense, taxes of all kinds, various other expenses, including bolded and underlined interest expense, where if you try to use common sense to classify this thing, you might get it wrong, right? But it's part of operating activities. And uh, yeah, and another important note here is dividends paid are not operating activities because they are not part of the income statement. And I, and I say that they're not part of the income statement. And that's why it's sort of my own idea here. I wasn't at the meeting where the FASB dis discussed it, but it does make some sense to me and helps me remember, don't put dividends paid under operating activities, but instead they would appear, you know, in the financing activity section. Let's talk about gains and losses from the sale of investment. On the income statement, you will see from time to time a gain or loss from the sale of property, plant, equipment, or some, some such thing. And let's say that we sold equipment and we had on the income statement a $10,000 gain, okay, $10,000 gain. Well, this is not really part of operating activities, this $10,000, and, and it's not part because of basically two reasons. Number one, the, the amount of the gain is not the cash that we received. It's not the cash inflow. It's not how much we got. For example, if we have a, 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 a gain of $10,000 and the book value is a million dollars, how much cash do we get? How much, everybody? How much? What do you think? Well, it would be the combination of these two or $1,010,000, as we see here. $1,010,000 is the cash inflow from the sale of the asset. So the amount of the gain is not the amount of the cash flow. And then the other thing about this is once we do determine the amount of the cash flow, where does it go? It goes in investing activities. It goes as cash collections from investing activities, which would be the sale of property, plant, equipment, or the sale of an, an investment. Now let's talk about investing activities. Investing activities. Uh, in my mind, there's a couple of types of investments companies make. The first are the financial investments, which we're all familiar with. You know, uh, your parents may be making them. You might be making them. Financial investments in stocks, bonds, investments in other interest-bearing securities. But they also invest in property, plant, equipment, and so forth that's used to operate the business. So investing in buildings instead of renting one. Investing in a delivery truck instead of paying a delivery service. Investing to acquire a patent to improve their processes and so forth. So these are all examples of cash outflows for investing activities. If you look at it, we've got situations where the company can invest in stocks, uh, outflows of cash for investments in stock, outflows for investments in bonds, outflows for the purchase of a building delivery truck and so forth. And then the cash inflows, the cash inflows would include cash inflows associated with the sale of the investments in stock or the investments into bonds or whatever the investment happens to be, or the sale of the building, the sale of the delivery truck. Um, the sale of production equipment and so forth. Now, let me ask you guys a question. If we look at property plant equipment for a minute, property plant equipment, 
and the company is buying property plant equipment and they're selling it. Like they buy a new uh, uh, truck. They buy a new truck. Now, once they buy the truck, they want to sell the old truck. So they're going to sell the old truck. How much are they going to have to pay for the new truck? A lot or a little bit? What do you think? If you're buying a new car, are you going to pay a lot or a little bit for the new car? What are you going to pay? Huh? A lot. A lot. Okay, so now you're buying the new car. You're buying a new car, right? And you got to get rid of your old car. You got to sell your old car. How much are you going to get for your old car? A lot or a little bit? Come on, guys. How much? A little bit. A little bit. So if we look at that, you've got an investment of a lot. You know, your your seventy thousand dollars for the car you want. But the amount you sell your car for, which maybe is a car that your parents gave you or something like this, how much do you get for that? Five thousand dollars, maybe. Well, nowadays, actually, you might get more because used car prices are going up. But still. So the amount, the amount of the investing activities for, for you would be $75,000 outflow, $5,000 inflow from the sale of the car, or a whopping $70,000 outflow. And with businesses, they do the same thing. They're doing the same thing. They're buying new equipment and paying top dollar for it, and then having to get rid of their old equipment. A lot of times, how much do you get? How much can they get for it? Like at Pippin Photo, if I go to sell one of my old print printers to print pictures, you know, that I paid $100,000 for, how much could I sell it for? How much do you think? Let me ask you, do, you, do you get, any of you guys want something like that? It's about this big, Prince Pictures, anybody? Anybody? You want it? You don't want it, do you? And nobody else wants it either. So, you know, you think, oh, I'll sell it for $5,000. A lot of times you have to hire somebody to pull it away. It's terrible, it's terrible. So, yeah. So we can expect, we can kind of expect that with respect to investing activities, if the company's doing okay, Companies doing okay. The outflow from investing activities is going to be more than the inflow. And so as the company is, you know, moving forward and making progress, likely we'll see a healthy outflow from investing activities. So now let's talk about financing activities, financing activities. And uh, this is related to issuing stocks, common stock and preferred stock. And it could also be that we buy back some of the stock as treasury stock. Borrowing through the issuance of bonds, so that's a way of borrowing, or general borrowing from banks and other lenders lending institutions from individuals and so forth. So if, if, if we think about it, you've got your, your cash inflows from the sale of common stock, the sale of preferred stock. You know, so we're, we're attracting investors, we're selling more stock. And uh, the sale of treasury stock, some stock that we bought, you know, and now, now we're going to resell. Uh, we, can, we have cash inflows from borrowing, borrowing with bonds, uh, general long-term borrowing and so forth. Then the outflows, the outflows would be the purchase of treasury stock, purchase of treasury stock, and then also associated with the equity transactions, here's a big one, cash dividends paid, cash dividends paid. They're, as I mentioned before, part of financing activities, right? So we want to include those. And then for borrowing, retiring bonds. In other words, paying them off, paying off the bonds. Payments or retiring general long-term or short-term general borrowing. Any repayment of, of general borrowing. But it's important to note that the interest paid, the interest paid is, is not going to be part of the financing activities, even though Kind of makes common sense that it should be. <clears throat> Let's talk about non-cash transactions, such as acquiring property plant equipment. We acquire a brand new airplane, say for about $12 million, and we finance the whole thing. The whole thing is financed. So what we have is an investing activity, so to speak, and that we bought this airplane, right? And then we have a financing activity because we borrowed all the money. So if you use common sense, just common sense, what should we do with that? Record the investment of the plane. And then in financing, record the, uh, you know, record the borrowing for the plane. Right? right? Is that right? On the other hand, you can use common sense and say, hold on, <laughs> this is a non-cash transaction. There's no cash that changed hands, and therefore it should not even be included on the state of capital. And that was the winner. That's the winner. What we want to do is instead of including it in the body of the statement, we will make a note of it. Make a note of it. And so instead of listing the two sides of the non-cash transaction in the body of the statement, Non-cash transactions must be disclosed at the bottom of the statement of cash flows in a schedule or in the notes of the financial statement. So we would have to disclose it in some way. Well, that does it for this video. Just a quick raw footage video on the statement of cash flows classifications. And I hope it was somewhat useful. If it was useful, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. So until next time, this is Mike Warner saying bye for now.